Hi, I'm Patrick Markfort from the weblog Articulate Nerd. And I'm Dave Ferraro from Comics and More. And this is our first Manga Monday podcast, which is very exciting. We're kind of breaking out of the mold of reviewing just more superhero-y comics and venturing into some graphic novel territory with this one. Um, we are actually reviewing um, Wandering Sun for this first week, a manga that's been pretty universally praised across the comics community, I feel like. Do you want to kind of talk about what it was about a little bit? Sure. Uh, Wandering Sun is a uh, the first volume of a manga released by Fantagraphics Books uh, by Takako Shimura. It is essentially the story of uh, two young transgendered kids, uh, two fifth graders. Uh, one, a boy uh, who wants to be a girl, and the other, a girl who wants to be a boy. Uh, they meet over the course of this novel um, and slowly come to, to some realizations about themselves and reveal some things uh, to each other um, about themselves. Um, it has a very gentle uh, tone to it um, and the, the author apparently uh, is sort of known for doing more realistic takes on LGBT material and characters. Um, so knowing that, um, or having heard that, um, I, I kind of went in uh, reading this book uh, sort of skeptical uh, because as a lot of people who do read manga, at least the, the stuff that's been translated, uh, or a lot of the stuff that's been translated to the US so far probably know, uh, I would not say that that is a particular strength of a lot of the manga we've seen featuring gay and lesbian and transgender characters. Um, probably uh, gay characters and things like that have been most visible in, in what's usually called yaoi manga, which you review a lot on this site in these uh, Manga Monday columns, um, which the characters in that pretty much bear really no resemblance to real gay people in the real world, fair yeah. to say. There are very few <laughs> that, that go into realistic characters. Yeah. And it's very much like, you know, just getting stories across that are very sexual. Yeah, and they're <laughs> and they're written by women for, by primarily straight women for primarily straight women, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. It's kind of a fun and genre. It's, and it's the perfect, you know, star-crossed lovers, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it, it's, it works. it's a lot of fun for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's not really stories about LGBT people, the LGBT community at all. We mm -hmm. have not seen a lot of that in manga. Um, so anyway, this this artist uh, writer is is sort of known for that apparently, uh, and Wandering Sun is supposed to pre be a pretty good example of it. Um, and I so so I went in uh, pretty skeptical. I was like, all right, let's really like like let's let's see. Um, I I mean I was looking forward to reading this book, but. Um, I did, I, I kind of had my defenses up, I was kind of like, okay, let's see how, you know, really realistic this actually is, how nuanced is this actually going to be. Um, and over the course of reading it, I kind of uh, don't know that I got an answer to that as far as how accurate of a portrayal of two young transgendered people this is. But more importantly, I kind of stopped caring about that about a third of the way through because what Wandering Sun certainly is, is a sensitively written book about two really appealing young protagonists at a very sensitive, particular time in their lives. Um, and it was very well done. I was ultimately very charmed by it. And I think uh, the characters in this book, like these particular characters, not looking at them as representatives of any kind of a larger cause or community, were very well developed. Mm -hmm. um, definitely you have a lot of empathy for them as a reader as you're reading it. Um, so on that level, the book was a success for me. And uh, yeah, ultimately I kind of stopped caring so much about how representative of this, how accurate is this as far as transgendered young people. Not that that's something I know a ton about anyway. Um, so yeah, ultimately I, I enjoyed it on that level and I thought it, it was well done. Um, so I really liked the two main characters. I really liked the tone of the book. 
Um, it had a very gentle, kind of light tone. It wasn't heavy handed. It didn't uh, present them as, as any kind of martyrs to, to the cause or anything like that. These are characters, they're, they're at just the right age where they're, they're just on the, they're fifth graders, they're just on the cusp of puberty. Um, they're just beginning to realize these things about themselves. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it treated it all very, very gently with a, with a lightness. There's a sense of fun to the book. Um, and there are a lot of little terrific character moments in it that I really enjoyed too. Um, a, a lot of those. The book is kind of really built on those. Those are really the strength of the book. Um, you know, uh, the, the boy Shuichi um, uh, purchases a headband at one point. This is the first, you know, article of, of girls' clothing that he's, he's actually gone out and purchased, you know, so it's a very kind of exciting moment for him. Um, and he's trying it on. Uh, the doorbell rings and he answers the door without having realized that he's still wearing this headband. It ends up being like a delivery person or something. Um, and he passes for the first time as a girl without really intending to. Um, and it's just a really cool moment. It's, it's a very small thing, but in this character's life, it's a huge thing. And there are a lot of moments like that uh, that come across very well in this book. The book really is built on small, quiet, gentle little moments like that um, that ultimately add up to uh, something pretty big. Um, and it's the first volume in, in what's going to be a continuing series. So, um, you know, there'll be, there, there'll be more of that kind of thing to come. Uh, I also really liked how the people in the kids' lives, the two protagonists' lives, reacted to what was going on with the two children. Now, they just begin to reveal um, themselves to each other. You know, they, they, they both realize that they are sort of kindred spirits in this way, um, partway through the book. Uh, they don't, do not come out to anyone else. Um, you know, they're, they're really just kind of learning who they are themselves at this point. Um, but the way that the, the family and the friends react to uh, what they do see, you know, like a, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, the little boy, oh, you want to dress up like a girl? Or you like that dress? Oh, let's dress you up in, in the dress and all this kind of stuff. I really liked how all that was handled. Yeah, it came off very authentic, especially the sister character, I felt like, with um, a friend comes in and she's like, you know, when one of the characters actually buys a dress for him. And... Um, and when she presents it to him, the sister's like, oh my god, that's such a great idea, I'm gonna go get a camera. And they right. kind of make fun of the boy dressing the girl, yep. that was her reaction. Yep. It's not, and of course a girl cutting mm -hmm. her hair short, as, as she does in this book, is, is more accepted than a boy mm -hmm. um, dressing like a girl. But because of the, I think because of the age of the characters, like if he was in 6th or 7th grade, it would almost be more of an issue. But he's just at that level still where his parents can kind of laugh at it, it's still kind of cute. It's kind of a novelty at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, it's very so Even in the background once, the mother walked by and yep. she saw him looking at, a dr at the dress yeah. and was like, oh, he's still looking at the dress. Right, kind of because I, I always hate in, in like gay movies or TV shows and stuff when like the character, like the main character is completely certain of themselves and who they are, right? Mm -hmm. And the if they encounter any opposition to it, it's it's almost like they set up these straw men arguments. You know what I mean? Where like, uh, how can I explain it? I mean, it's it's like the the people who are opposed to it are like so wrongheaded and mm -hmm. so opposed to it. And the, the transgendered or the gay or lesbian person is so innocent. And it, it becomes this like martyr situation that's just very, it, it turns it into a polemic. It's, it stops being a story about real people. Mm -hmm. And Wandering Sun never goes there at all. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. always about these particular people, these particular situations so I really like that mm -hmm. uh, the other you know kind of level to that is that um, I mean it would be one thing if he was being bullied and I, I suspect bullying will probably play a part in this series I would almost think it would have to in later volumes mm -hmm. but it really doesn't in this first volume um, and, and if he was hurt by bullying but he's almost hurt by the fact that it's taken so lightly by other people you know, mm -hmm. it is treated like such a light little thing. What they don't get is that this is a major thing for this boy. That's what they don't realize. Um, and that's all played very subtly in this. 
Mm-hmm. So um, it's very much about him just finding out, like you know, who he wants to be. He realizes and this the thing, and just too. a self discovery. And the girl, I mean, it's mostly I feel like at this point Shuichi's story. We get a little bit of um, Yoshino, but I feel like they they're concentrating more on Shuichi at this. They point might balance time. on him a little bit more. Yeah, on this yeah, one. exactly. Um, but yeah, I'm sure she's going to come into a ma- more of a major. Yeah, role. I mean, and she obviously, a lot in, in this, she was, yeah. she, you know, she got her hair cut short. She was the first one to go out in public, mm-hmm. uh, passing. She would actually dress as a boy. She would get on the train or the subway or whatever, and actually go pretty far from their community and kind of walk around and go to restaurants and things and just kind of be out as a boy. She's doing that first before she brings Shuichi along with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of great moments there too. Yep, and he's he's obviously reluctant to kind of embrace the side of himself, but she coaxes him along a little bit, so mm-hmm. he he eventually does do that. Yep, it's a really nice it's a really nice moment. I yeah. kind of identify with that a little bit. Um, growing up as a gay man, um, younger, I would think about like going you know kind of far away. Um, right. To kind of like like embrace the side of myself, um, I would never think about revealing it to people around me, like in in the town I grew up in or anything like that. It would be something kind of far away, kind of like what they're doing with the train, just going where no one would know them, no encounters, you know, would be there, but they'd still get to kind of be themselves there. Mm-hmm. So I kind of identified with that quite a bit, and that kind of brings forth some of the authenticity I think of what at least the author is kind of like intending for this. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, we have yet to see like you know, how far she goes, what kind of thing she does with it. But I think so far it's coming up as pretty authentic. Yeah. You have your reservations about it, but... Well, no, I really I th- don't have reservations anymore. I mean, it, it comes up as authentic in that I believe these two characters in these situations. There's nothing that rings false. There's nothing... You know what I mean? And so um, I guess what what I think about it when I talk about authentic or not authentic, it's like, okay, well, like, I'd be curious to see if there are reviews and what the reviews would be for this in, like, the queer press. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, actually, this is what it's like for, you know, transgender people, and this is what it's like. You know what I mean? Like, some of the kinds of criticisms that a movie like Chasing Amy, uh, which I know is is, is controversial in, in the uh, gay and lesbian community, but some of the kind of criticisms that that movie got is it, it kind of irregardless of how true these characters seem within the context of this film. It was read in a larger context of, of how accurately do these characters represent uh, a gay and lesbian experience. Um, so I'm not, I don't know ultimately what people will make of this book on that level, but I would, I'm going to start saying, I don't really care about that as much at this point i can't believe there's anything that would be hugely offensive here um and and ultimately the important thing is that that uh she had she has drawn some really fully realized really compelling young characters that come across as 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 fairly real people Mm -hmm. um so whether or not their experiences reflect um the transgendered community or to what extent for me, it's sort of irrelevant just given the, based on the quality of, of characterization that's on display here. Um, so I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty much um, on board with it on, on that level. Okay. 